Greetings everyone, I am Dr. Wolf, and I just watched Growing Up is Hard to Do. Oh wow, we finally get to see what the CFC would look like as grown-ups. I mean, there have been many, many, many fan interpretations of what they would eventually look like, but yeah, that's fun to see it in the actual show. But anyways, when I read the synopsis for this episode many weeks ago, I expected that this was kind of a way for the voice actresses behind these characters to finally get to show what they can do as adults in their acting. And we got a little bit of that here and there. I mean, back when My Little Pony G4 started, the voice actresses behind these characters we're kids. It's been quite a few years since then, and yeah, they're all adults, and they're all branching out into new fields for their talents. And this is an interesting way for the show itself to kind of give them this opportunity. I imagine that if you were to compare the voices from this episode and then go back to season one or season two, there is a significant difference when you put them side by side. I mean, there's not near as much squeaky bell these days. <laughs> At any rate, though, it is very apparent from very early on exactly what this episode's conflict is going to be and what its resolution is eventually going to become. Because, yeah, they're setting up when they're talking to Rarity and Rainbow Dash and Applejack and Twilight and Fluttershy. For some reason they didn't talk to Pinky, but maybe she isn't the best example of being responsible. <laughs> At any rate, Rarity talks about keeping promises, and Rainbow Dash talks about responsibility. You'll understand when you get older. So we know exactly what the eventual lesson is going to be, that these characters not only need to grow up physically, but also gaining experience and knowledge and being able to help advise others properly. Because when this flower shows up, by the way, the first time I saw this flower, I was immediately thinking, tale as old as time. I mean, anyone else get that vibe when you saw this flower missing a few of its petals and encased in a glass or crystal thingy? I don't imagine that was just a coincidence. <laughs> and given that it's an enchanted flower, apparently it grants wishes. So it's a great way to suddenly get the CMC to suddenly be grown up rather than coming across a spell in one of Twilight's books or trying to trick Sakura into helping them do something like this. I mean, an enchanted flower, having them just be grown up by accident, unexpectedly, that's a better way to go about this kind of story. And eventually, the CMC are getting lost in the swamp and no, Apple Bloom, the last time you went through a swamp, you almost got burned alive and then almost eaten by a chimera. So, again, this is kind of the writers showing these characters are not quite as knowledgeable and experienced as they really should be. Overall, this episode is entirely predictable every step along the way. But it's still honestly fun. Not only because we get to see the CMC grown up and getting to sing a new song, perhaps for the very last time, by the way. And yeah, listening to this piece, it kind of reminded me of Hearts as Strong as Horses, although it's not quite as catchy. And I did very much appreciate the line, we can win any argument because we say so. <laughs> that is entirely a child's view of arguments and being right. <laughs> but adults who use that kind of argument with a child, yeah, it's really understandable that a child would get that hint that that's all you have to do is be a grown up and then everybody would have to listen to you and everybody would have to respect your advice. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure that a few grown ups out there have ever grown past that point. <laughs> and then before we reach the county fair, there is this little furry critter in a strange looking box. And the more I watched this, the more I was thinking, is this supposed to be kind of like a mogwai? <laughs> because a little furry critter that the 
owners have no idea what it really is and are being irresponsible and it turns out to be far more dangerous than any of them could have ever expected. <laughs> That's really giving me a Mogwai vibe here. <laughs> but at any rate, having Twilight and Fluttershy be the ones to kind of resolve the conflict and show the CMC, yes, you need experience and many years of training before you know how to advise and help others, especially with very specific things like uh, handling, what was it, a, a wild mung tooth? I think that's what Fluttershy called it. <laughs> it's an interesting little critter. <laughs> but yes, we could all see the lesson coming from a mile away. And Yes, the setup towards this lesson is basically spelling everything out long before it actually happens. With that said, I believe this is an exceptionally effective means of teaching this kind of lesson. I mean, for a lot of kids out there who really do want to grow up and really do want to feel like they can take care of themselves, this kind of story is probably just what they need to give them better perspective on things. So I can really respect and appreciate that aspect. There are a couple of comedic moments here and there. I mean, again, the little song lyric, we can win any argument because we say so. <laughs> and naturally, Applejack, knowing Apple Bloom as well as she does, is immediately realizing, wait, you're not gonna try to go off at the county fair by yourselves, are you? <laughs> that is what experience teaches an adult. <laughs> but honestly, all that talk about wanting to be responsible and keep your promises and taking care of others in their time of need, and how each of the CMC in turn are basically begging these older ponies to put aside their responsibilities for just one day because are you ever going to have any fun? And yeah, that kind of hit me a little personally because I love to work. I love to feeling like I'm serving a purpose and helping others in need and keeping my promises. And yes, I follow the old adage of work is good play must be earned. So if I had one of the CMC ask me that same question, yeah, it's it kind of personal for me. It is difficult for me to just put off responsibilities and focus on having fun even with other people. It's hard for me to take those steps consistently because I start feeling anxious. I start thinking about everything that I know I should be doing. And that can be a little difficult to overcome at times, especially when you go out on vacation and you're supposed to be letting go of your responsibilities for several days at a time. So I can kind of feel for the adults here and I can kind of feel for the CMC here, but again, the lesson really pulls it through. It's something you can see from a long ways off and every little setup, especially towards the beginning when they're asking each of the adult ponies in turn, can't you put off your responsibilities, you know exactly where it's going to end up. And I will admit there are other episodes where I definitely had a lot more fun watching, but this is a nice little novelty to finally both see and hear the CMC as adults. And yes, this is very likely their very last outing. It doesn't feel like a complete close to their story arc because in some ways they've matured quite a lot from how they were back in season one and season two and in this case it feels like they regressed just a tad putting aside what they knew they should be doing but it was still fun at times and it was still a very effective lesson for those who haven't seen it many 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 times before and i can appreciate little touches like <laughs> a sort of mogwai creature who is far more dangerous than he might seem at first glance <laughs> I wonder if anyone is actually drawing fan art of this little mogwai within this episode, because that would have been fun. <laughs> At any rate, though, I did enjoy watching Growing Up is Hard to Do. It may not be quite as entertaining as some of the other Season 9 entries, but it's a nice little beat that we've wanted to see from the CMC for quite some time. But then what did each of you think? How much did you want to see the CMC in their grown-up forms throughout the years of the show? And 
Do you believe that this is the best way to approach such a subject? And whether there's anyone else in the audience reminded of tale as old as time when looking at this enchanted flower covered in glass? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, because as always, I am Dr. Wolf, and I look forward to hearing from you.